I'm in Ireland. We have the biggest Microsoft update ever in the history. And we say goodbye to Windows 10. All this in the Patch Report. Hello, everyone. I'm Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our unofficial patch wrangler. As you can tell, I am on the road again, getting ready for Pwn to Own Ireland, which happens next week. But we got a whole bunch to talk about before then because Microsoft released its biggest ever single monthly update. Adobe, thankfully, took it easy on us, and uh, we've got a pretty small update from them. So we do have 12 bulletins, but only 36 CVEs and just kind of the regular sort of stuff that they update almost every month. If you have to prioritize anything, commerce that deals with money, um, there are a few code execution bugs, but overall nothing's pop public, nothing's ready to uh, explode. It's all priority three. So just keep that in mind. Now, Microsoft, oh doggies, we, we've got some time to talk about this. 177 new CVEs. The previous record, I think, was 147. So that's 30 beyond. Now, why is it so big? I don't know. I would like to think it's them trying to get as much out for Windows 10 before they stop supporting it, which is today. So no more Windows 10 support. But we'll see. We'll see if that's a new thing. This also pushes them over their total for last year. So last year they had 1,020 CVEs. This year they had 1,021. Already two more months to go. Yikes. Uh, we've got three under active attack. Let's start talking about those. The first one is in this very old modem that I can't even, I don't know how to say this, a Jir, Agari, whatever. It's an old modem that driver that's being exploited in the wild. Uh, and this is how old it is. The fix is to remove the driver. That, that's what Microsoft is doing. So I don't know. Now, this does ship on every version of Windows, so it could be very widespread. Of course, Microsoft doesn't give us any indication of how widespread it is, but who knows? So definitely t pay attention to that. The other one is this remote access connection EOP. And you know this is basically your privilege escalation. Get your system uh, really is often paired with a code execution bug. And yeah, that's how that works. Um, so that one could be widespread, probably wrapped up in ransomware. The third one, this under active attack. Wow, I just read this and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so strange. It's a secure boot bypass. So first of all, it's a secure boot bypass, period. That's physical access. I don't know how they detected something with physical access, but it's an IGEL, I-G-E-L OS. <coughs> which I hadn't heard of before, but apparently you can bundle stuff up and run things on other operating systems, on OS dependent. So uh, it's very intriguing to me. Um, it's on iGel OS before 11, the latest is 12, so there is that. But this is just astonishing to me that there was a physical attack involved in this that is now actively under attack. Uh, I would suspect this is very targeted. I would not suspect this is very widespread. If nothing else, just the physical nature of the attack is going to make it very hard to be very widespread. Uh, the other one I wanted to bring up here is a WSUS bug. This is remote code execution, unauthenticated, remote, uh, elevated privileges that you get, no user interaction. <coughs> Say it with me, that's wormable. Yep. So a wormable bug in a WSUS uh, server. And of course, worm will only between WSUS servers here. So I'm really not thinking this is going to be a worm, but I am thinking this is going to be targeted because WSUS obviously is part of your critical infrastructure. If you use it, it's a very juicy target that if you take that over, you can then push out a lot of nasty things to the rest of your enterprise. Uh, it's a CVSS 9.8. So really, really gross looking bug here. And uh, we'll see how it goes. No active exploitation on this yet. I expect it to be heavily scrutinized in the near future. Now, moving on to the table, who doggies? We got three that are actually uh, publicly known. No big deals with those. This is going to go on for a while, this table scroll. 
Look at those. Look at all those CVs. And you know what? I read each and every one of those CVs for you so you don't have to. Every single one of those things I looked at very closely. Oh. So, in any ones, look at, oh, I'm still going. And then we finally get done with the Chromium ones. Oh my goodness. Uh, I do want to note that there are several that require additional activities beyond just applying the patch. Please take a look at those. Um, okay. So going beyond looking at the rest of the critical updates for October, the ones that stand out the most, of course, again, Office with the preview pane. Uh, code execution through the preview pane uh, in Office and Excel this month. I forget how many months that is in a row, but boy, I wish, uh, hey, I know it's haunting season and these are haunting Microsoft. That's all I can say. Um, they've got a bunch of criticals uh, listed in the uh, release. But these have already been resolved by Microsoft, so there's no further action for you, which is good news. Um, I do want to point out one of the public ones is in AMD-based computing, and it uh, is uh, not patched yet. So AMD released their patch yesterday, but there's not a patch for Azure yet. So definitely follow that if you are using that uh, Azure-based uh, confidential computing ACC AMD based cluster. Uh, it sounds like it could be very serious, but again, no patch yet. So yikes. Uh, moving on to the codex, other code execution bugs. Most of them I think are office bugs and office related, except the preview pane is not uh, an attack uh, exploit vector. So those are just open and own. That's pretty good. SharePoint server does require some level of authentication, but it's a very low level of authentication. Uh, RDP client, uh, nah, you gotta connect to a malicious RDP server. So unless you can really social engineer someone, I'm not too worried about that. Um, hey, it is Halloween, right? We are getting close to Salwine here in Ireland. That's for sure. I saw a banshee last night. If you hear other things on the microphone, that's just the banshees. It's okay, or the little people, I don't know. Uh, but IE has returned again to be patched. It is like a slasher chasing a final girl. It just will not die. Uh, so yeah, another IE patch, array for that. Then we get into the elevation of privilege bugs and holy cow, there's so many of them. Over half of this release is EOP bugs. That's a lot of EOP bugs. And I read each and every single one of them just for you. Uh, but yeah, so most of them are gonna get you system. They're going to get you admin. They're going to go from low to medium integrity. They're going to go from medium to uh, local service. A couple that kind of stand out a little bit. Um, the Azure mon monitor agent could allow uh, an attacker to read just about anything on the system uh, with NT system privileges. Um, there is also some guidance for uh, the virtual-based security, that one needs to be really added on. So uh, definitely take a look at that. And <clears throat> there are a couple kernel bugs which are really weird to me because they say, oh, it allows a, a user to crash a system. Well, then why isn't that a DOS? And why is that an elevation of privilege? So I know on a file delete, we can turn a file delete into a privilege escalation. We've done that before. We've seen that. Actually seen that in the wild. But for... A system crash, I don't think that's an elevation of privilege. I just think that's a done on LO service. My two cents worth, whatever. Uh, going on to the security feature bypasses, uh, there are quite a few of these that are Windows BitLocker. Normally, I would say whatever, BitLocker. But now we have evidence of an active attack using physical access. That's when I really start paying a little bit closer to a, a BitLocker and secure boot uh, patches. So obviously, physical access is required, but, you know, it makes me think of it. Um, see, the ASP.NET could smuggle an HTTP request to bypass front-end security controls and hijack others' uh, credentials. That's pretty cool. Um, what's not so cool about it is you're going to have to recompile and redeploy a lot of your uh, applications based on the implementation. So make sure you check out the uh, the bulletin for the details on that and bug Barry Doran's online on Blue Sky if you have any questions. I'm, I'm sure he'll be happy to hear from you. Um, the bug in RDP could allow a bypass of RDP authentication, which is pretty cool. And there's a bug in the kernel that allows 
attackers to apparently decrypt some kernel settings, uh, but that's pretty unusual. Um, we got a bunch of info disclosure bugs. Thankfully, most of them are just random pieces of memory. There are, of course, notable exceptions. Cryptographic services leak. Well, what do you think it's leaking? Oh, cryptographic things, sort of sort of things. Yeah, that, that be, could be bad. ADFS could allow uh, the, an attacker to obtain SSO cookies. Those could be useful, right? I think so. Um, there's not too much else. The push notifications could bring up anything in the event log service. Uh, .NET could expose PII. And uh, finally, the taskbar. I love this. And it could, could expose secrets or privileged information. Well, okay then. Uh, there are a few spoofing bugs, but there's not a lot of information about these spoofing bugs. It, the write-ups just say they could allow spoofing on the network. So you kind of have to read a lot of tea leaves to get any details on this. Um, the only one that they really do talk about is the JDBC drivers for SQL could trick a target into connecting to a malicious server. The only way I see that really being of, instant, uh, of significance is if you combine it with one of those, it's like, oh, well, this SQL bug just doesn't matter until it connects to a malicious SQL server. We combine it with that, and now you're spoofing uh, their their connection so they don't realize they're connecting to a, SQL, a malicious SQL server. That's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, there are a couple exchange bugs. I, I need to mention this too. I, I kind of blew through the exchange bugs in the elevation of privilege one. Sorry about that. But the exchange bugs could allow you to read anyone's mailbox on the exchange server. Uh, and that's bad. Uh, but then the uh, the spoofing bug uh, just, it states unauthorized attacker to perform spoofing over a network. So with Exchange, I don't know if that means you can look like someone else or if you can imitate a, a mailbox or whatever, but definitely Exchange admins, pay attention and make sure that you do uh, what you need to do. We got 10 DOS bugs, not really anything in there. Uh, the only one of note is that uh, there's an office DOS bug where it says the preview pane is an attack vector, but uh, user interaction is required. So I don't know what the deal is with that because there's no user interaction with the preview pane. So I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so we don't quite know how that DOS is triggered. Uh, anyway, we've got a, rounding this out, we've got a tampering bug in SMB client, but that involves a machine in the middle and then we have a cross-site scripting bug in Dynamics 365 on-prem. And that, my friends and neighbors, is 170 plus Microsoft bugs in roughly 10 minutes or less. So, lot to attend, a lot to take in, a lot to process, but the important thing is you have uh, three bugs that are under active attack, really only two if you just take away that physical access bug, and uh, a lot of things to go through. So definitely take your time with this. Test everything. Deploy it quickly. Hey, wish us luck for Pono in Ireland next week and follow to make sure you get all the results. And uh, I will be back, if I survive Pono to next week, on November 14th with the latest and greatest from security updates from Microsoft and Adobe and beyond. So until then, stay safe, everyone, and may all your updates be smooth and clean.